Now, one form of market failure that you're almost guaranteed to come across in, uh, in any basic micro course is uh, externalities. And this video is gonna look at positive externalities. So what do we mean by an externality? That's really the first thing we ought to consider. An externality we can say is a spillover effect on a third party not involved in the decision. So when the economic decision is made, uh, the consumption or production of something, if that decision affects somebody other than the decision maker or the people involved in the decision, then it can be said that an externality exists. And in the case of a positive externality, that means that the spillover effect is beneficial to the third party. So what we're talking about here is a product where through my consumption of it, I am bringing benefit to uh, other people, um, that those people may be in my immediate vicinity or they may be more distant, but my consumption of something brings benefit to others. Now, the example I'm going to use to demonstrate this, first of all, is uh, one of the, the classic economic examples of positive externality, which is uh, the argument for vaccination. Uh, now, I want us to keep, the, uh, keep these definitions uh, available, so I'm just going to shrink those and move them over there. Um, to start this next little bit of the video, though, I just want to show you an image, first of all. So here's uh, some data that we can look at then. This is uh, a graphical representation of uh, measles uh, cases um, in, uh, in the States. So down here you've got, uh, got the various states. Um, I couldn't find a nice, uh, nice equivalent graphic like this for the UK. Um, essentially you've got the vaccine being introduced here in 1963. Um, now you can see on the left, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, it's fairly obvious, but the left is a lot more colourful. Um, and as you can see down here, the fact that it's a lot more colourful means that there were a lot more cases of measles. Um, what you can equally see is that as soon as the vaccine was introduced in 1963, very quickly you saw a tailing off of um, the uh, the number of cases of measles and uh, and that that has continued right the way through. So so the, the lines get fainter and fainter and fainter um, until in, you know, kind of the, the, the mid 2000s, um, it, it, was, it was very, very low rates. Um, of, uh, of measles cases indeed. So what, um, what we're going to look at essentially is uh, vaccination. We're going to use measles as our context and just explain why uh, if, left to, uh, if to, left to the market forces, we may well experience a situation where the measles vaccination is not consumed enough. Now, obviously, by the act of somebody becoming uh, vaccinated against measles, the it's less likely that, that they themselves are going to contract the disease. Um, but what we're, I suppose, more interested about when we're thinking about the externality is the impact that it has on other people. So uh, I'm going to add this to our little collection of things that we're going to keep up over here that we can come back to later on. Um, but what, um, what essentially I want to address very briefly now is uh, what's called herd immunity. Which, uh, which is a really important concept when we're thinking about vaccination. And what herd immunity means is that if a sufficiently large amount of the population are vaccinated against something, actually uh, that means that, uh, that the population as a whole will, will become immune because so few people will not be vaccinated that actually the disease can't spread. Um, now measles is one of the hardest ones uh, to eliminate because the, uh, the amount of people that have to be vaccinated to generate herd immunity is very, very high. It's, it's uh, something in the, the kind of the mid 90s. So 95% of people uh, need to be vaccinated against it. Um, some things that we already have um, eliminated, uh, things like smallpox and diphtheria, um, they were eliminated uh, at about 85% um, just because of the, the differences in terms of how easy it is for the disease to spread. But, um, but, but herd immunity is very important here because if we think, uh, you know, if I've got a, got a person here with measles, uh, in a nice, uh, nice pink colour, obviously. Um, so if, if we've got our, our person here with, uh, with measles, if I've got um, a lot of uninfected uh, people around but who don't have the vaccination, then very quickly uh, the disease could spread and these people would then become infected and then they could in turn go on to affect other people and so on and so on like that. Um, the herd immunity basically says, well, what if I've got one person who is infected, but then if around that person I actually have a whole load of uh, other individuals um, who are already 
vaccinated against this disease. Well, if they're already vaccinated, then obviously they, they can't be, uh, be infected by this. So um, although the measles tries to spread, it, it, it can't find any unvaccinated people uh, to move into. And as a result of that, the, the infection is contained. So the important thing to think about here then is if, if, we, uh, if we just highlight one of these, uh, one of these sensible individuals here who has been vaccinated. Let's take this person here. Now, obviously, they were vaccinated because they didn't want to catch measles. But the fact that they are vaccinated also brings benefit to those people um, further along in the chain who can't now catch measles because this, this person who they may have caught it from uh, hasn't been able to catch measles. Um, so, you know, the, the, there are extra benefits here to other people as a result of, of this individual deciding to have the vaccination. So uh, let's think about what that means then in terms of how we would represent that on a diagram. Now we're going to start off with um, our normal demand and supply diagram um, and consider how we, how we add to, this, uh, to consider the positive externalities here. Um, a, couple of, uh, a couple of things to think about. When we, when we talk about these, we break down the, uh, the benefits um, in terms of what they're referred to. So the marginal private benefit, that's the benefit to me as the person deciding whether I'm going to be vaccinated or not. So the private benefit here, that refers to uh, the person doing the consuming. Okay, so the marginal private benefit that goes to the consumer. The marginal external benefit is the externality here. That the fact that there is this extra benefit going to, uh, I suppose, what, what we could say is going to the non-consumer. So the other people around and they benefit because they have a reduced chance of getting measles from me because I can't now be a carrier. So if we think about uh, our standard market diagram here, we know that this gives us an equilibrium. Uh, so we're going to start with that. Now, when I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to be vaccinated, um, what, uh, what economic theory would suggest is that I'm going to take account of uh, the benefit, the utility that I receive as a result of having the vaccination. So that's what determines my demand. The demand, in other words, is determined by my own benefit, i.e. the marginal private benefit, as we, uh, as we identified up here. So the demand curve is derived from the marginal private benefit. Um, but what we also know, as we've just said here, is that there are extra benefits on top of these, the external benefits. So what that means is that at any given level of, uh, at any given level of, of quantity, there are going to be additional benefits on top of my own private benefits. So, um, you know, at, uh, at the lower level, it, it would mean that essentially we end up with another curve like this, we can label as the marginal social benefit. Now, um, important to highlight here that um, this isn't the marginal external benefit, this, this line. This is the social benefit. So this is my private benefit plus the external benefit, both of them together. The externality is the size of the gap in between. So this gap in between, that is the positive externality. And as we've said at the top, that is the marginal external benefit. So you've got the marginal private benefit, which is the demand curve, the marginal external benefit, the positive externality is the gap in between, and then you've got the marginal social benefit, which is the two added together. So what this presents us with then is um, another, a new equilibrium. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep using the, uh, the green here. So we end up with another equilibrium at this position. Um, now, obviously, we need to distinguish, so I'm going to call the previous ones PM and QM for the free market outcomes, which is what we had when uh, the, the consumer was thinking about their, their own benefits. But what we can see now, actually, is if the consumer was taking account of all of these other benefits as well, these external benefits, then actually uh, they, they should be uh, demanding on, on the MSB curve. So what it means is that actually they should be uh, consuming Q star. So QM is the free market outcome. So the outcome when the consumer is thinking only about the private benefits to themselves. Q star is the outcome which benefits society as a whole the most. And we refer to this as the social optimum. 
Now, the fact that there is a gap here means that actually less will be consumed in a free market than ought to be the case. And as a result of that, we come to essentially the kind of the, the, the way that you should always finish an analysis of a positive externality by saying that a positive externality good will be under consumed. So less of the good will be consumed than ought to be the case. So uh, some other kind of key things that, uh, that, that, that you might want to include in an answer. The marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal private benefit, as can be seen by, by the diagram. And also the social optimum level of output, Q star, is greater than the free market level of consumption, which is QM. Uh, so you try and include those, uh, those, those inequalities in your answer as well. So I hope that's explained the, uh, the idea of uh, positive externality and that you've understood the, uh, the example there with vaccination. Um, there are a lot of other goods which generate uh, positive externalities. Um, you can talk about kind of uh, health checkups generally. Um, education would be positive externalities. On a smaller level, I suppose you could think about things like, um, uh, you know, uh, brushing your teeth um, and therefore having, uh, you know, a uh, nice minty breath, um, wearing deodorant. Um, uh, you, I suppose in certain people could argue that listening to particular types of music generates positive externalities because the people around can benefit. Um, so lots of different products that, uh, that generate this sort of effect. Um, for those uh, more advanced, you also need to consider how you show uh, what's called welfare loss on, uh, on this diagram. And welfare loss... Um, a lot of people find it difficult to shade the, the correct triangle. Always remember the triangle should point at the social optimum. So the triangle should point there. Um, and that means that this triangle represents the area of welfare loss. So that is the, the sum total, essentially, of, uh, of the utility which is lost as a result of the level of consumption being too low.